Hey everybody, Rebels of Cloud9 here. Today I'm going to be building, uh, well, a kit I've wanted to actually build for quite a while now. Heller's 172nd scale 109B1 or C1. This is an older Heller kit, but um, Heller's back on the market recently. They, they bounced back somehow, and I'm quite excited about that actually. So if you still want to get this kit, you can go to Heller's website and you can still pick it up. So it's not a little lost treasure anymore. I'm building this as part of uh, Michael's root build at ModArt633. Um, he is doing a Spanish Civil War group build. And like I said, I really do love the 109. I think it's a very, very beautiful and very mean looking aircraft. And I love these old style intake engines here. They just look so great, hey? It's got this just big, big, big intake in the front there. And I was really excited to find this kit because I wanted to participate in his group build. Michael's a pretty awesome guy if you've ever checked out his channel. I'll include a link to his channel down below there. Um, and uh, I really wanted to participate in this one. But my problem is finding a kit. So when I found this one, I was pretty darn excited. So let's take a look at the sprues, shall we? So here we have the first sprue of the fuselage. It's all raised detail, which is a bit unfortunate because you guys know me, I like to do panel line washes and won't really be able to do that with this one. Um, but this has some really nice interior uh, detail in it there. Um, quite surprising, I don't know if my camera's focusing on it. Come on. There we go. So it's upside down. But. Yeah, look at that. We got the pump there. We got Heller, and here we have uh, the wheel. Oh shoot! It just left me with that wheel does. Oh no, I'm so lame. Yeah, if you were to ask me when I wasn't filming, I wouldn't know. But we got a couple parts rattling off here. Uh, we got the control column, wings. The detail on them looks pretty darn good. Quite happy with that. And next sprue we have here the lower wings. We've got a bit of an instrument panel. I don't think there's a decal for that. There's not much detail in it, but it's 70 second scale with the canopy closed up, so I'm not worried or upset. Uh, we also get two style of propellers. We have a fixed one here, and we also have a uh, controlled one there. Uh, both are twin bladed early versions, and the propeller is in here. It just fell off. So here's part of the cockpit floor. Again, that's the part that rattled off. Um, here we have, surprisingly, three pieces to the canopy. I would have thought they would have done it in one. It's kind of cool they did it in three. I'm going to close all three of them up. So um, so where are these pieces? Okay, here's the plug, I think. Nope, that's just a piece of sprue. Um, hold on a sec, guys. Yeah, here's the propeller. That's what I'm going to use. So thankfully it was in there because I wanted to use that one and then I looked and it was gone. <laughs> I started panicking a little. And here we have the seats. Not much to it, it's just a you know regular old bucket seat. Um, the instructions are old. They're, you can definitely tell they're in a, quite a bit of an old style. They do have Humbrol colors on them for both paint options. And uh... It's clear, easy to read, so nothing to worry about there. Um, and then, yeah, here we have the decals. And they look quite nice. I'm very excited to use these. So, I'm going to go and get started here. Check the instructions. Start building the uh, all the uh, cockpit. And then we're going to get painting and detailing all that up. I'm just going to use Tamiya RLM Grey XF22 uh, for the interior. I don't quite care how accurate or not I'm being here. Because it's just the inside of the cockpit. Um, most people won't even see that. So I'm going to use a wide angle brush here. And what I should probably do is should I, I should probably make another one of those little swatches there. And... Uh, Oh. Come on. There we go. So, one of my big problems is, has been with this 
build is, is number one, finding the time, because I kept, I thought when he announced it, I think it was back in November, I got the kit in December, it took me a while to find something, and uh, I thought, ah, I'll have this done in no time, ha ha ha, and then life got in the way, and now it's March, and it ends in, um, it ends in uh, April 1st, and so I'm kind of kicking myself, because I, yeah, I really thought I would have it all done by then. So I'm just going to, like I said, I'm just going to hand brush all these details in here. I don't just, I like using just a wide, long haired brush like this. And there's a couple details that need to be, you know, basically painted black, um, some silver. And I'll go ahead and do those in a minute. I thought about adding a wash in here, but eh, it's a little too small. I don't really see. I've, uh, t I took a look at the canopy, um, the the clear parts, and they're uh, they're pretty crazed over, and not really that nicely molded. So you're really not going to see inside of here as much as you'd think. So, yeah, I, I had a hard time finding information about these. Uh, planes and stuff. I, my dad is a 109 holic, basically. Um, he's studied the 109 for years and years and years. And but the one he's never really studied are the Spanish Civil War 109s. There's uh, ah, whoops. At the time, there wasn't. You know, he was really collecting books. He doesn't really collect much now. Um, but at the time, he was collecting books on him. Uh, the, the Spanish Civil War wasn't really, um, kind of a highlight in the book industry. So, uh, I might have a good couple Father's Day presents lined up there for him. But finding information for these things is really just, it's just been a challenge. What colors were they on the inside? Well, this source says this, and this source says that, and there are no like real sources that actually have the colors that are actually you know from that time you know they might still be painted blue um because they were used during like one of the ones used during the olympics um i don't think that was a b though um so yeah i've just been having a very hard time finding them and the other one that had a really hard time with was the upper surface color and michael was even nice enough to try and give me a hand with those ones but I'll be blunt I, I was never really satisfied with any of the colors that I found never really found this kind of weird gray green it looks lighter than this but it's kind of the same thing and um, Hataka paints they make a Spanish Civil War paint set but it's pretty expensive um, and so I only wanted the one paint and they do sell them individually except for their Spanish Civil War paint set. <laughs> so go figure. The one paints I needed are the ones that I can't get. Right, has to be that way. So I'm gonna go and yeah, I'm gonna go clean my brush. I'm just gonna go paint all the details freehand. Nothing much to them, and uh, I have to put the the propeller together. The propeller assembly that needs to be all put together. And then we can, yeah, then we can actually glue the thing together, the two sides. So let's do that. All right, I painted up the insides here. Just, just a little bit of detail, nothing, you know. Come on, camera. I gotta get it really close in there. Just a little bit of detail, nothing too accurate or fancy or anything like that. And I'm gonna let that leave that to dry. So I'm gonna do the propeller assembly right now. Now, I'm doing the later version of the propeller assembly, and I can get away with this because in my studyings, um, this is the propeller I wanted to use. I didn't want to use the, the controlled, uh, or sorry, fixed version. And according to my readings, and I found this in two places, they used the, they did use the, the fixed propellers, that, the earlier one. But later on, they quickly, uh, quite early in the war, switched over to these fixed versions. 
Since I couldn't find an, a picture of this one in particular, I decided to say, well, maybe mine was caught up in that as well. So mine's going to be uh, a, a pitched one because I, I really wanted to build that one. Okay, that's not a good fit. Let's try and get that there. Tight together. Great. Probably gonna have to sit here and hold this for a little while. And then put the plug on the back. I can see that this is a bit uneven, so I'm gonna fix that later with my um, drill. I'll just Okay, so that needs to be cleaned up a bit just to get rid of those glue seams, but it does fit and uh, doesn't look half bad. Come on. No, don't focus on my cuticles. Forget it. <laughs> I've had enough. Let's just see how she fits in with the, with the rest of the plane here. So this is what I like I like to do. Like a lot of times you'll see these things and they're like, yeah, glue this piece on here and just, just glue it on there. Uh I I prefer to leave them kinda off and then glue them like this. And then once you have that that proper position, take them out, you know, so it doesn't settle in here. Um that way you don't accidentally glue your propeller down. So yeah, now, now it's just more of the waiting game and I gotta clean up that propeller. But, um, yeah, I'll give it an hour or so and I should be able to get back to work here. Alright, so I've, <laughs> I've loaded my propeller. And, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna sand it down here. You can feel it, this little area where it's not quite smooth. Ah, there we go. Alright, that'll do the trick. So, take out the batteries on this thing here. But I'll leave it right here so I remember to do that. Let's just round this out a little bit. Okay, pretty good. So this is what I was saying, is I'm just going to drop a little bit of glue into the bottom of the, of the cap there. Put this on, like so. And there. So now I have an accurate measurement there. And I'll just add a little bit more glue. Done. Okay. Now I have to wait for more paint to dry. Or glue, rather. But, um... This stuff's basically done. So, maybe I'll just... Glue this in here. Why not? Since we're here... Those dogs are terrible. They think they see something on the other end of the yard and they go at it. There's nothing there. Oh, there we go. 
<laughs> I botched it all up. Sake. I'm just going to put these together really quick just so they stay while they're gluing. Since I'm bumping that off the table, I've done that too many times, and I do not care to repeat that. Okay. Now, I'm just going to put, I think you will do, I'm going to put this like that. Yeah, that's going to hold. And I'll just leave this till later. And uh, yeah, once that dries and settles in there, this should be dry. And then I can just put that little panel in the front. And yeah. I don't know what to do next. <clears throat> Figure that out later when I get there. So I've glued the wings on and the pretty good fit. Uh, there's a bit of filing that needs to be done on uh, this edge right here. That's not bad. <clears throat> That's not bad at all. So now I, I thought about adding on the um, the rear uh, wings or stabilizers on the rear stabilizers on the back. I'll just say it that way I'll, I'll be able to sleep. Um, but what happens is there's supposed to be, this tail is supposed to be white and it's kind of always hard to paint that properly when you have stuff behind it. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is leave them off until I'm done. And what I'm going to do now is just sand down the model, sand down the wing edges, um, sand down these areas here, you know, and after that's done, I'm just going to putty the whole thing and leave it and, uh, yeah, putty it, come back, sand it down smooth, um, then figure out what to do from there because I'm a little at a loss for right now where I want to go next. Probably masking off the canopy if I can. It's kind of, that one's going to be a little difficult to do. And I'm debating whether or not I should just hand paint them myself because they're pretty thin. So I'll give them a give them a bash and see how they turn out. But uh, yeah, I think they just need to be clean. I actually think they are pretty thin, transparent. Just maybe a good cleaning will help out a bit. Anyways, that's the plan for right now, I guess. Is to just get all that little mini work done on it. But it looks really good. I really like the shape of it all. Even with the raised panels, it looks quite nice. So I'm pretty excited because, like I said, they they just re they held us back. They re-released this kit, and I might get another one or two. Who knows? I'll, maybe I'll get one for myself because <laughs> I'm getting this for my dad. Uh, I also got this today. Um, actually, I had someone get this. They were in town. And they they picked this up for me. This is oh my gosh! Is that screwed on tight? Holy crap! Can't get that out. I had a dickens of a time, like I mentioned, trying to find the color, and this was apparently very close. And I had a look at it, and I'm kind of like, screw it, I'll use it anyways. Maybe I won't. That's really on there. Did someone do this as like a joke? Anyways, I'll just show the bottom here. <laughs> this is field gray. That's very green. XF65, I'm going to use this. I'm just going to use it, screw it, be done with it. And, uh, yeah, be on my merry way. If I can get this lid off. Which seems impossible at this point. But, we'll see. So, uh, this is going to take me a few days for the putty to dry properly. And then, yeah, I can get to painting it, I guess. We'll see. 
So I did quite a bit of work here, sanded down everything, it's nice and smooth, hopefully it filled in properly. Um, yeah, put on the wing ballast there, um, I think that's what they call them, anyways, pitot tube there on the side, um, and oh yeah, and the landing gear, uh, decided to just put that on just to build them up, put them on there so I can, you know, place it down properly without having to worry about you know, <clears throat> touching something else and possibly putting a, leaving a fingerprint somewhere, leaving it on something to dry. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go airbrush the flat white on the wingtips here. Um, canopy has been masked. You can see I didn't do the front. I I just ran into so many problems trying to mask the front windows, and I. Um, it just it just wouldn't stick properly. The tape wouldn't adhere. I was having a very hard time seeing through the lines. And I know there's a lot of people that say, well, why don't you put the liquid masking tape on and then you cut around it and peel up the frame. Um, I find that that doesn't exactly work as well as, as a lot of people claim. Um, at least at least with my experience. And I just used... Um, where's that stuff? Here we are. Micro mask. And... I, I do like this stuff sometimes better than the other jug of stuff. What is that stuff? Got, got one in each drawer. Um, liquid masking film. I find that this liquid masking film works way better on big surfaces than, than for small little details and stuff. I'm going to order, hopefully today, the Humbrol um, mask all. Maybe, maybe tomorrow. And if that doesn't work, I'm going to try the Mr. Hobby stuff. And if that doesn't work, uh, well, then I'm out of luck, <laughs> I guess. So, uh, I did manage to get the sides on there, but uh, as far as the front, I just had too much trouble. I decided I'll just hand paint it. Um, I'm going to have to watch about, I don't know, 15 hours of raw basic modeling videos so I remember how to do something like that. And... Uh, yeah, that'll be, that'll be just easy, just, hopefully. <laughs> I'll botch it up somehow. Um, but yeah, I'm going to paint the white on the tail and on the wingtips, and um, yeah, then it's ready to go paint the rest of this, this stuff on here, which I'm pretty excited about. So I'll be back when it's all airbrushed, and we're ready to move on to the next step.